Hey guys, thanks for clicking to watch this video. Stay tuned to see how I install the Eco B4. If you want to purchase this, I would appreciate you taking a look at the description below where I have linked this product. It's an affiliate link, so if you purchase it, it would definitely help me out and I appreciate it. I've also linked a couple of tools that I show in the video that I've used if you'd like to purchase those as well. One thing I do want to mention, if you're not a member of Rakuten, or used to be called Ebates. I'm linking below for that as well. If you go through and sign up, you'll get a, I believe a $10 credit and any purchase you make with any of the stores that they offer credit from, you'll get a credit for that and a check every quarter. So definitely worth looking into because the Eco B4 is an Amazon product and they usually offer a higher percentage. So if you go through Rakuten, First, click on the Amazon link and then make your purchase through Amazon. It'll track it and I believe it's about 5% credit. So that's also something to note and sorry to keep you waiting. Here's the video and I hope you enjoy it. Today, I'm going to install a smart thermostat. I didn't want to do it alone, so I thought I'd bring you with me. We'll go through this together. I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but I did watch a couple of videos. So let's start there. Let me show you what I got, okay? Okay, it's the Eco B4 that I'm installing. This is the device. You can see it's got a speaker on the back and this is for Alexa. I can't say her name too loud because I have an Echo Dot in my other room and she'll start talking. So it comes with that. It comes with this back plate here. I may or may not use it, but you'll use this to connect the wires to, which I'll show in a little bit. But this basically mounts to the wall and then these little prongs here attach to these right here on each side. So this is basically what it will look like on the wall. It comes with screws and the little things in case it has to go in sheetrock and not a stud. It also has a sensor that you could put in another room so it could tell what the temperature is. So if this is in a hallway and there's a room that's colder or hotter, this will actually sense what the temperature is in that other room and average out the temperatures. If I don't have the right number of wires, which it looks like I probably don't, they come, they do include a power extender, which is this thing that I'm nervous about because I'm gonna have to find my furnace one and then connect these wires and then connect the thermostat. So this is a little more complicated than some of yours might be. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this does come with a booklet and it tells you step by step what to do, which is great. Um, and it comes and it includes these stickers so you can label the wires um, that are in the unit, both upstairs in the furnace or wherever your furnace is in here. This is the thermostat. I previously installed this probably a couple of years ago, but you just pull it off the wall. Um, it's battery operated, so there are numbers on there, but that's mainly battery. But I have four, one, two, three, four. If you have four, five, then you don't need to do anything with the extender and everything's ready for you. You have to turn the power off. I don't know which one is for the air conditioning unit. I'm just gonna turn my main breaker off. I wanna be safe and not sorry. You know what I'm saying? I need to be in the furnace and I think it's up there. I don't really know what tools I need, but I need this extender that came with the unit. I need a headlamp so I can see because power is out and I need light. I got this in case I need to bend these wires to go around the bolts or whatever. And then I got a wire stripper in case I need to do those because some of my videos that I looked at said that they may be too long for this. So I may have to strip the wire or clip them. I have my instructions and my labels and for a Phillips head because more than likely I have to open the furnace. Okay, I put everything in a plastic bag and I carried it up and uh, I think that's the furnace over there. So I got to make my way to it. There's some flooring. Okay, so these were the screws for the furnace. So it turns out I need to go get my ratchet wrench. This thing hinges up. That's probably what I need. Okay, so here, <clears throat> here's the deal. I have one wire that's coming in here to these. And I have one wire, this brown one, 
it's coming from over there into here. So there's two separate sets of wires that are coming in here. This one is coming from the outside unit. I've traced it all the way up that pipe and all the way over there that goes down to the outdoor unit. So the outdoor unit, I talked to my boyfriend for help. He knows electrical work. He said this one from the outside leave on these ports. So I labeled this Y because it's in the Y spot and then this C that's in the C spot and these are from the outdoor unit and then so he said remove all the indoor unit ones so all of these and then that'll be the first step this is a flathead screwdriver and i need to be able to get into it from here to here so i don't think i have a short one but i'm gonna look okay i'm back i don't have a really short screwdriver but this is kind of short so i'm taking this Fortunately, this particular one is loose. So I'm going to take that out. There it is. This is the white. And you can see it's labeled with a W. Okay. You see the Y right here? Um, I am going to... This wire is from the outdoor thermostat, which I'm going to keep to the Y but this yellow one is from the indoor thermostat. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Here's the yellow. You see it? These are coming out of this one right here. So now I've got only two coming from the outdoor. <clears throat> this one labeled in the C, which will stay there. This red one that was in the Y, this is why you label these. This is upside down, but that says Y. Probably should be wearing a mask because of the insulation that's up here. <coughs> but no. Okay. I loosen that one. Let me get this one loosened. Guys, just a reminder, make sure you disconnect your power before you mess with this stuff. Some of these are really obvious. Like you should probably label them all just in case you're colorblind or have a brain fart, but the obvious ones, the red that's connected to the red, I left that. The C um, this is white, but I labeled it C because it was in the C. So this is the outdoor thermostat. This one controls the one, I guess, for the outdoor unit. And this G, for it's a green wire. It's in the one marked G. And then this R, it's ultimately going to... The other red one will go back in the C. Okay, we have the outdoor unit, these two that I've labeled. So the ones with labels basically are the outdoor unit, and these are the indoor unit ones. We've got a green one, a red one, a yellow one, and a white one. So with this extender, I have to put all four into these. So I'm going to put the red in here where the R is. I'm going to put the G where the green where the green is yellow and white so the one that comes from the inside thermostat goes on this end here and then these on the other end go back over here where these were originally okay the way you put these in here is pretty easy the the yellow for example goes in the y there's a hole here so it'll go in there but you push this button right here down and then you stick the yellow wire in the hole and then you let go and it stays down and it holds it in there but because there's so much exposed wire here left, I brought these. This is why I brought these. So I'm just going to cut the end of it just so it's a little shorter. And you could see like this one where there's no exposed wires. I'm going to make it like that. Here's what it looks like. Nice and clean, I think. R, G, Y, W. Red, green, yellow, and white. These, which you can see maybe, are labeled. This gray one is W for white. This is upside down, sorry. Yellow, green, and this blue is the C, and the R is red. Okay. They're going to go into these corresponding letters here. Did the green here, I loosened this screw enough to get it in there. And what I did is I took these tweezers that I was going to use, and I basically touched the end of it, that, and then I curved it under. So you could see this is what I've done here. Um, I'm just going to hook it in there. So you want to make sure the screw is high up enough that you can get this in there. And you're basically just going to hook it around the stem of the screw. See how it hooks real nicely in there? 
okay the outdoor thermostat remember these they the C that I labeled C this one needs to also be in here okay now I'm just going to clip this in here as well you want it, them both to make contact through this tight the white attached see it says W the yellow attached it's yellow with the yellow one that I marked from outside unit I got the red marked to the red the blue it has a C on the other side of it you can't see it that goes to the C and then this white wire was from the outside thermostat that I labeled C because it was originally in here and then the G for the green wire on this side so this is what comes in the thermostat it comes here into this and then it converts it this is magnetic you can stick it to a magnetic surface right here comes from here so I'm just gonna feed it back through that hole like that and then you see that there's a hole there that it comes through just feeding it back through there and I'm gonna let it magnetize to here which is awesome and then I'm just gonna kind of put these wires up here a little bit so this one is from the outside unit I'm just going to pull, they don't let me, actually these are in there pretty tight so I can't exactly pull it through this hole to this other side here so I'm just going to flip it and kind of bend it back there. I just don't want it to get jammed up when I close this door. This piece here, there's the holes right there and there. So this goes like that and it slides in and now I'm just going to put these screws in through here and I'll be done up here. Okay, I got this little Stanley kit of screwdrivers it's got the flathead screwdrivers and phillips head on the other side because these are small so i'm basically going to unscrew these disconnect and then unscrew this from the wall okay i went ahead and pulled the wires through i took the old one off i put the face plate on i put this on and then i drilled with a drill in there just to see if there was a stud and there was if there wasn't you have wall anchors that you can use for the sheetrock and then you screw the screw into it so i basically partially screwed this in partially screwed this in and then did it to where it's level i don't think it even matters if it's level but they give you one so you can be ar about it so once i did that then i tightened them both okay my red one was labeled rc on the old one so i attached it to the rc here the yellow one they said mark it as PEK which I did here and all you do is you push this down and then there's a hole there on the side of it so you put the wire there on the hole while you're holding it down and when you let go it should stay down okay and then the next one they said to do was label the green one with a C and I put it in there and then the white one label is W1 and I've done that so all four wires are done so now I'm going to attach the eco b and turn on the power here's the eco b here's the back of it and these prongs need to line up like that and it's relatively simple you just basically hold it on there and push it in to connect it and then the next step is to go turn on the power and this should start booting up well okay power's on let's get started okay it says success i went through the steps so now all i want to say is the current mode of my system is to be cool and i changed the temperature to what i wanted at it's requesting registration code okay so let's get it set up and test it i'm all done it's all set up it works great i set it to cool to make sure it got on and it was cold and I changed it to heating to make sure that was working because winter is upon us and the last thing I want is to be hot cold and need heat and find out I didn't do it right I hope you like this video I hope it wasn't too confusing for you the one thing I do have to say is if you go in your attic and you have insulation which we all do wear a mask because I kept coughing and I think the fibers from the, the blown insulation was floating around and getting in my throat not a good thing so make sure you do that but i hope you like the video i try to do these things just so i can log it and help others that may not know what to do that one was a little more confusing if you've got five wires then you're going to be good you just do the thermostat you don't need to do the extender 
So I hope it made sense. Sorry I got cut off, but leave a comment if you have any questions. I will certainly try to answer any questions you have. Definitely test out your thermostat to make sure that it, it heats and cools both. Um, just to make sure everything's operational and functional. Sorry for the dark lighting in the video, but without power, I did the best I could and I didn't have everything on a tripod. So click the like button and if you want to subscribe for future updates, please do so as well. Thanks a lot. And again, if you want to check out those products, they're in the link below and they are affiliate links. So I would definitely appreciate your help. Have a good day. Until the next time, see you later. Bye y'all.